Hey guys, so today I'm here with a jailbreaking frequently asked questions video. Uh, now, since the new jailbreaks are just around the corner, I've decided that right now would be a great time to go ahead and talk go over some of the more common and frequently asked questions about jailbreaking. Uh, now, obviously, these questions are really, this video in general, is not really meant for the advanced jailbreaker, somebody who's been around a while. However, it's more focused towards the novice jailbreaker who maybe you've never jailbroken before and you're thinking about it, or you've had jailbroken maybe once or twice, but you don't understand everything about it. So, if you think that you might you know, want to learn just a little bit more about jailbreaking, feel free to stick around with the video. Jailbreaking is the term used for removing the Apple restrictions on your Apple TV, on your iPod Touch, your iPhone, as well as your iPad. Uh, now, jailbreaking is kind of, you know, like a, a, a kind of an interesting term, um, but that's pretty much what it does. Uh, now, what, what I mean by that is, uh, take for example your iPhone or whatever. Uh, if you want to go ahead and download an app, customize something, tweak something, Everything you do has to go through the Apple App Store. And to get into the App Store, Apple has to individually go through each application. So basically, it is a very closed system. Only exactly what Apple wants is allowed through. Now, for some people, this is not a problem. You know, there are obviously are quite a few really nice apps in the App Store. Everybody likes the App Store. However, jailbreaking, through jailbreaking by jailbreaking your device, allows you to do pretty much anything and everything you want. Uh, so instead of being limited by Apple and what they think, you're limited by what your device can do. Uh, so what this means, you can go ahead and download apps um, that maybe Apple doesn't like, such as Google Voice, GrooveShark, quite a few others like that, in addition to modding, tweaking, pretty much doing anything and everything you want. Cydia is the quote-unquote jailbreaking app store. Uh, now, what this means is that when you jailbreak, generally your device will look pretty much identical to the way it was, with one key exception, and that is the fact that Cydia is now on your device. Cydia is, for all intents and purposes, an app store for jailbroken applications. Uh, so, the way Cydia works, however, is quite a bit different from the app store, as that you can pretty much do anything you want with Cydia. It's just a groundwork. Uh, so, using Cydia, you can download paid applications, and yes, there are paid jailbreaking applications. Uh, so, quite a few developers like to go ahead and charge for their mods, their tweaks, their applications, which is totally fine. However, the overwhelming majority do give all the content away for free, and using Cydia, you can download and install pretty much anything you want. In addition, Cydia allows you to add your own repository. Uh, now, what repositories are is basically places where you store software. Uh, so, with Cydia, you can go ahead and add any repository, and anyone is free to make one. So, if I felt like I could do make my own repository, put my own custom app in there, and then give you guys the link to go ahead and add it, and then you could download it through Cydia. So, that really is the key difference between Cydia and the App Store, is the fact that a lot, with Cydia, anyone can download anything. There are pretty much no restrictions whatsoever. Whereas the App Store is very closed and very you know, narrow. Uh, now, when you do get Cydia, it's not like you lose the App Store either. When you download Cydia, basically through jailbreaking, it's the exact same thing. You can still have full access to all your App Store applications. So obviously, you're still able to buy all the great games and applications from Apple. However, you do have a secondary source to go ahead and download other sorts of things that you cannot get through the App Store. Now, there are two terms that are used a lot with jailbreaking, and this is a tethered jailbreak and an untethered jailbreak. Uh, so this is really quite simple. If you have a tethered jailbreak, what this means is that when you go to turn off your device, not just lock it, but actually totally shut it off when you, know, you get the slide to unlock, that, and then when it shuts off, you will not be able to boot it up by itself with an untethered jailbreak. Uh, so basically what this means, it's pretty simple, is that whenever you have it totally off, your iPhone, iPod, whatever, when it's totally off, you will need to go ahead and plug it into your computer and rerun the jailbreaking software that you originally jailbroke with. Now this is a little bit of a hassle as it will take you a few minutes every time maybe your, your device, you need to shut off, whatever, you need to go ahead and plug it into the computer and rerun it. However, it will go ahead and boot up just fine. 
Um, but for that reason, I really generally don't recommend these these types of jailbreaks as they get really pretty annoying pretty fast as you have to deal with plugging into the computer, spending a couple minutes every time your device maybe runs out of battery, you need to restart for some reason, so that gets pretty annoying. On the other hand, an untethered jailbreak is pretty much exactly the way it sounds. You're free to go ahead and turn your device on and off, no worries, you never have to really run the jailbreaking program again. Uh, now these days, pretty much all major jailbreaks are untethered. Uh, tethered jailbreaks used to be a thing a little while ago, but it looks like they're kind of becoming a thing of the past. However, there are still a couple of untethered, or rather, tethered jailbreaks around. Now, as far as this question goes, it really depends on you. Uh, so, the best analogy I can think of is think of your, app, your iPhone, your iPod, your iPad. Think of it as when you jailbreak, it turns into a small computer. Uh, now, obviously, if you have a desktop computer, uh, when you have a lot of programs up, if you mod it, if you tweak it a bunch, it's going to go ahead and slow it down. Well, the exact same thing holds true for your Apple device. Uh, so what I mean by this is pretty simple. Uh, just don't add a bunch of stuff, okay? Uh, so obviously, that's the beauty of jailbreaking. You're free to do as much as you want. If you want to style every single icon, redo every little bit of graphics on the entire device, um, run a ton of different you know modifications, tweaks, you're absolutely free to do this. However, you are still limited by what the hardware can do. Um, so like I said, it's the exact same thing as if you take your maybe your Mac or your Windows computer and you make it video wallpapers and um, just you mod it like crazy, sure it's going to work, but it's going to be very slow. Uh, so in general, jailbreaking really doesn't slow anything down. It pretty much, uh, if you freshly jailbreak a device, it's really not going to be any slower than what it, what it was before. However, when you do get to add a lot of these custom apps, tweaks, themes, and mods, it will slow your device down. So what I recommend is always to kind of, if you're going to download something, always be sure, maybe if you don't decide you don't really need it, uninstall it, keep your device running nice, smooth, and clean. Absolutely. Uh, so take for example my iPod Touch second generation. Now I'm not even joking, I have probably jailbroken this well over 100 times in the couple of years that I've had it. However, all it takes is for me to go ahead and plug it into iTunes and press the restore button and it is going to be 100% as good as new. Uh, that's one of the great things about the way Apple has designed the hardware in the fact that it is very hard to go ahead and you know leave any sort of data behind. In fact, all it takes is just plugging it into iTunes, like I said, and pressing the one restore button. It will go ahead and wipe everything out on the device and restore it to a non-jailbroken state. So this is very handy if for you if you would like to sell it. Uh, if you want to decide that you know maybe jailbreaking is not for you, for whatever reason, there's absolutely no reason why you can't go ahead and go back to a clean and unjailbroken state. No, using a standard jailbreaking program from one of the established development teams, you should never actually totally kill your device. Uh, so the way this works is that Apple has a very clever system in place that pretty much prevents anything from actually totally killing your device. And it actually is two modes. One is called DFU mode and one is called recovery mode. Now I'm not going to get into exactly how to enter these modes or anything like that, but basically do know that these are safeguards that are in place that prevent your iPod, iPhone, or iPad from getting totally destroyed or bricked is usually what it's called. Uh, so, now there can be a lot of reasons why you can have problems. Now, of course, you know, if you download a bad tweak, um, maybe there's a glitch going on, or in fact, maybe something more serious, like, you know, when you're in the middle of jailbreaking, your computer crashes, you accidentally unplug the device. Um, there are a lot of different reasons why something could go wrong. However, there should never be a situation where one of these little problems, mistakes, actually totally renders your device unusable. Uh, now, there are several different methods to go ahead and revive it from the dead. Uh, now, the most common and the one you absolutely should go for first is iTunes. All you need to do is take your device, plug it into iTunes, and click Restore. Uh, almost always, you should be able to go ahead and revive it. It should go ahead and restore back to normal, and you should be just fine. Now, in much rarer cases, 
um, where that won't work, then there are a couple of other programs, which of course I'm not going to go ahead and get into today. Um, but do just know that assuming that the hardware itself isn't busted, so you know as long as your iPhone, your iPod Touch, or your iPad is in good working condition, a jailbreak should never actually go ahead and render it unusable. Yes, if you update your device using iTunes, it will remove the jailbreak. And this is something that a lot of first-time jailbreakers don't understand and gets them into trouble, is that Apple is constantly updating the firmware on their devices. Now, of course, this is a good thing because they continuously fix bugs and add new features. However, if you're jailbroken, you definitely need to be very wary of these updates. So let's say, for example, the last firmware update, which was 4.1. Now the last working jailbreak was made for 4.0.1. So a lot of people from 4.0.1 saw the update in iTunes and went ahead and updated, not really realizing what they were doing. Now by updating your device through iTunes, it does remove your jailbreak. Uh, so this is something that all jailbreakers need to be very cautious of. The best thing to do is, if you're jailbroken and you obviously want to stay jailbroken, ignore the iTunes updates. Now, every time there is an update, it takes the development team quite a while to go ahead and make a new jailbreak specifically for that firmware. Now, sometimes it takes less time than others. Uh, so, for example, sometimes it takes almost no time. In fact, sometimes jailbreaks just carry over. However, the majority of the time, if you know if there's a new firmware today, well, it take, might take the development team a week, a month, several months to get a new jailbreak out. And in case, and a lot of the time, you're going to be stuck on that firmware and not have any other options. So that's why when you're jailbroken, always be very, very wary. Never go ahead and update your firmware until the jailbreak team goes, hey, we have a new jailbreak for it and you have the all clear. Now this is one of the most important things about jailbreaking today. As an SHSH blob, to put it simply, is the key to allow you to downgrade your firmware. Now, like I touched on earlier, when there are firmware updates, a lot of the time they are not jailbreakable immediately, and they take quite a while. So you always want to be able to downgrade to lower firmwares. Uh, now, before, a, about a year or so ago, you could do this freely. All you had to do was take your device, put it into iTunes, and you should be able to go ahead and downgrade your device. However, Apple has put in place a system that does not allow you to do this. Uh, so this is um, it, this is really annoying for a lot of different reasons. However, the major reason is that you just basically cannot downgrade unless you have Sage or SHSH blobs. Uh, so like I said, your an SHSH blob is basically the key to allowing you to downgrade your firmware. Uh, now there are two different ways to get your SHSH blobs. Uh, the first one is through Cydia. So when you have Cydia, it always should go ahead and pop up with a little thing that says should I let make my life easier? Go ahead, always click that button as it will allow Cydia to save your SHSH blobs. And at any point, you can go ahead and download the blobs from Cydia and downgrade to that firmware. It's a fantastic feature and I highly recommend that you go ahead and enable it. Now the second feature, which is a little bit more robust and it's personally what I use as well, is called Tiny Umbrella. Now I've done videos on it previously, you can go ahead and check out my channel to see, but basically Tiny Umbrella will actually save your SHSH on your computer. Uh, now again, this is great as you can go ahead and use it with your, with your SHSH safe, you can go ahead and downgrade to that firmware no problem. Now there is a catch however, you can only get your SHSH blob while you are currently on that firmware and Apple is still signing it. So basically what this means is that as of this video, the most current firmware for the iPhone and iPod Touch is iOS 4.1. Now let's say I don't have any SHSH blobs and I want to go ahead and downgrade to 4.0.1. Well, I cannot do that because Apple is no longer signing those blobs. So that is why it's imperative to go ahead and save your SHSH blobs as soon as you upgrade to the firmware. So really pretty simple and doesn't take that long, but you would be I mean, very, very surprised at how many people do not know how to do this. So I highly recommend every time go ahead and save as many SHSH blobs as you can because you never know when and why you might need to downgrade. But by just simply saving the blobs, you always have that choice. Anyway, I hope that you found this little frequently asked questions video helpful in answering some of your questions. Now, of course, there are always new jailbreaks on the way. 
Um, there are always new updates on the way as well to kill the jail rates. So it's a constantly changing game, and you always really should stay on top of it. You know, if you're really into jailbreaking and you really like the freedom that it affords you, then really there's no reason not to go ahead and pay attention. You know, when there's a new update, don't do it. Um, when there's a new jailbreak, that's when you update. You don't update immediately. Um, lots of little things like that are very important and get a lot of first-time jailbreakers in trouble. However, as long as you know you just pay attention, you don't just you know, start randomly pressing buttons in iTunes, you should have no problem keeping right ahead of the train. Uh, so anyway guys, if you do have any questions you want to know about anything about jailbreaking, including a full tutorial for pretty much every single jailbreak that comes out, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, like I said, I'm really big into jailbreaking and I always do go ahead and post full tutorials pretty much as soon as the jailbreak comes out. So you always have, you know, a little tutorial to go ahead and show you how to do it. Usually it's pretty simple, but I like to go ahead and help everybody out by making tutorials. Anyway, again, hope you found this helpful and thanks for watching.